Hello and welcome, everyone. I am Xiao Hai Guo. Today, I'll discuss a controversial denomination once known as the Worldwide Church of God. Some of you may not have heard of it because Noel did not cover this denomination in his book and because it's known as Grace Communion International today. The Worldwide Church of God was a force in its time. According to Jay Goodson Thomas in the early 80s, their tax-free income was $70 million, holding greater financial and media power than the ministries of Billy Graham and Oral Roberts combined. They had about 100,000 baptized members at the time, but everything changed when Herbert Armstrong, their founder, passed away in 1986. Worldwide Church of God's success can arguably be traced to that one person, Herbert Armstrong. According to Grace Communion International, Armstrong became devoted to Christ while he was a newspaper advertisement designer in the 1920s. Even though he had no seminary experience, Armstrong began to preach and establish what would become the Worldwide Church of God. He started a magazine publication titled The Plain Truth and began broadcasting his message through a radio program known as the Radio Church of God. Later, he expanded the church's presence through his television program, The World Tomorrow, which was carried by 350 stations. Armstrong started his own college as well, known as Ambassador College, which trained leaders for the Worldwide Church of God. Part of Armstrong's success was due to the experience he already had in the media. He was able to find a wealth of radio and media opportunities on the West Coast, he had the charisma to broadcast radio and television programs that reached all over North America. To unite the scattered believers, he also established a college to train future ministers for his church in Pasadena, California. This was all very well thought out and organized. The worldwide church was very different from other denominations. Armstrong rejected the doctrine of the Trinity, believing that the Holy Spirit was merely a tool used by God and Christ and not a unique entity. In order to be saved, each member of the church had to follow Old Testament laws. For instance, they had to eat kosher. Each member had to strictly observe the Sabbath. According to David Dawes, the Worldwide Church of God didn't even celebrate Christmas until 1997. Members were discouraged from seeking basic medical care because all healing was supposed to come from God. They were also discouraged from voting as this was seen as imposing human will rather than God's will on the world. But the most controversial aspect of Armstrong's church was their belief that they themselves were God's chosen, that true Christians were only from this church, and that every other Christian denomination were pagans. As radical as Armstrong's church was, it worked. By the early 80s, they had 100,000 baptized church members. As mentioned before, their financial and media power were greater than Oral Roberts and Billy Graham's ministries combined. But when Herbert Armstrong died in 1986, everything began changing for the Worldwide Church of God. His successor, Joseph Tkach, changed the church's doctrine to be more like other Christian denominations. According to Grace Communion International, in 1988, Tkach first allowed members to visit doctors if they needed medical care. Then in 1990, his teachings started focusing more on salvation through Jesus Christ, rather than through biblical law. In 93, the Trinity was accepted as church doctrine. Then in 94, Tkach made two important announcements to his church. First, they no longer had to observe Old Testament laws. Second, that God's chosen did not include, did not just include the worldwide Church of God members, but Christians from other denominations as well. The short-term effects of these doctrinal changes were heavy. By 1996, the worldwide Church of God's membership decreased by 50%, and their church's income decreased by 40%. Many members rejected the doctrinal changes and formed their own sub-denominations based off the teaching of Herbert Armstrong. Yet that was not the end of the Worldwide Church of God. By 2009, the church joined the National Association of Evangelicals and changed their name to Grace Communion International. The church currently has about 50,000 members around the world. The Worldwide Church of God was one of the most controversial churches in the 20th century, led by their founder, Herbert Armstrong. The church became influential across radio and television, but following Armstrong's death, the church divided and became more evangelical. Quite a fall from grace, but nevertheless a return. After all, they are now known as Grace Communion International.